I just got an email from one of my course students who couldn't get a 3D coin engraving to work. She wrote, I downloaded the dragon image that says depth map, uploaded it into Lightburn and tried to engrave. I've gone through quite a few coins trying to get this and another image to work. I know these settings work, but it's not even making the change in noise that it usually does when the laser is actually removing material. So I had her send me some screenshots of the exact Lightburn settings that she was using and everything checked out. Those are often the settings that I use for my own coin engravings. I also asked her to send the image itself. And honestly, once I saw the depth map, I was already pretty sure I had a good idea of why it wasn't working before I even ran it. I still went ahead and bought the same file off Etsy just to confirm. This wasn't a laser problem. It wasn't a settings problem. This was a depth map problem. So I ran the file exactly the way she did. The laser is firing, material is being removed, but visually nothing is really changing. This is exactly what she meant when she said it wasn't even making the usual change in noise that it does when you're running a depth map file. At this point, a lot of people would assume something's wrong with the laser or the file settings, but it isn't. Lightburn is doing everything you told it to. Everything up to this point is just top level layers being removed evenly. Now, here's the important part. It took 48 layers engraved before the top of the image started to reveal itself. You can see that little piece right there on the camera. I'll circle it. And that lines up perfectly to what she was seeing. It seems like something's going wrong, but it's not until you realize how far the depth information actually is. Think of your total number of layers you set here as your depth budget. In this case, we're using 256. If you're burning through 40 or 50 layers just removing the top surface of the coin, you're spending a huge chunk of that budget before the image even starts. That usable depth is gone. That's why depth maps like this often lead to flatter, less detailed coins, even though you might think your design looks pretty good. So the question becomes, how do you know if a depth map is at a good starting point before you try engraving it? And the fastest way to find out, check the histogram. So the first thing I do is load the depth map into an image editor. I'm gonna use Photoshop, but if you don't have Photoshop, you can use something free like Affinity 3 or really any other image editor that has access to a histogram. Because this is a grayscale image, the histogram is showing us pixel brightness, not color. On the left side of our chart here, that's the darker pixels, which are gonna translate to the deeper areas of our coin engraving. And on the right side, that's the lighter pixels, which are gonna translate to the higher areas of our coin engraving. What I'm looking for here isn't a specific shape, it's how much of the brightness range is actually being used. In this depth map, almost all of the information is packed right there in the middle. There is no data being shown on the far left-hand side of our chart here. So that's the deeper areas of the coin. And there is no data being shown at the far right-hand side of our graph, which is the top areas of our coin engraving. That tells me right away that a lot of the depth is gonna be buried, which is exactly why we had to engrave so many layers before anything showed up. Those layers are part of your depth budget. If the histogram is narrow like this, you're spending that budget just lowering the surface evenly instead of creating any kind of detail. Ideally, I wanna see the histogram reach much closer to both ends of this chart. It doesn't have to be perfect and it doesn't have to be a flat graph, but it shouldn't be trapped in the middle like this. When a depth map looks like this, I usually call it a muddy depth map, not because the art is bad, so to say, but because the depth information is so compressed. So now that we know what the problem looks like, let me show you what a better starting point would look like and how much sooner the depth starts to separate. So instead of trying to force the original file to work, I went back to the source image and I ran it through the depth map generator that I like to use, Sculpt OK. I found it does a much better job of generating depth maps specifically for laser engraving. Now let's look at the histogram on this version. Compared to the earlier file, the histogram immediately tells a different story. Instead of everything being packed in the middle, we now have meaningful information stretching out much closer to both ends. That means that the depth isn't buried anymore, it's distributed. With the first file, we burned through almost 50 layers before the image even started to show. With this one, we're not wasting that depth just by lowering the surface. Those layers can actually be used to create shape and detail and depth. Just based on this histogram alone, I'd expect this version to start separating almost immediately. Now let's run the new depth map with the same exact settings. And there it is, there's the difference. 
the image starts revealing itself within the very first engraving pass. That's what we want to see. Nothing about the laser changed, nothing about the settings changed. The only thing that changed was the depth information. Instead of spending 40 or 50 layers just lowering the surface, the depth starts separating immediately. And that's how you preserve details and get a more dimensional result. And here's a side-by-side -side comparison of our finished coins. On the left is the first coin that we ran with the original depth map, and on the right is the second coin that we ran with the upgraded depth map. Same laser, same exact light burn settings. Overall, you can see the detail and dimension is so much better with the coin on the right. So before you engrave any depth maps, especially ones that you didn't create yourself, there are a few things to keep in mind. First, not all depth maps are created equally for laser engraving. So depth maps are used for all different types of things, uh, photography tricks, 3D renderings, animations, gaming assets, and not all depth map generators are gonna produce a result that are suitable for laser engraving. So just because you download a file off the internet or buy a file on Etsy that's labeled a depth map, it doesn't automatically mean it's gonna work well for engraving. The second check is a really simple visual one. When you look at your depth map, just ask yourself, does this look very gray overall? If there are no very dark areas and no very light areas, that's gonna be a red flag. Because as we learned today, images like that hide all their depth information in a really narrow range in the middle, which leads to a flat looking coin. That's exactly what we saw with the Dragon file. The first thing I notice when looking at this file is just overall how flat and gray it looks. And the final check, the histogram. Open up your depth map in an image editor and see how much of the brightness range is actually being used. You ideally wanna see data spanning from all the way to the left side to all the way to the right side. Doesn't have to be perfect, but you wanna make sure that all that information isn't bunched up in the middle. Look, there's obviously more ingredients that go into getting a nice 3D coin result, but starting with a solid depth map is gonna give you the biggest bang for your buck. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments section below. And as always, I'll catch you later.